Joining us now is Evolution Venture Capital Partners and founder CEO Greg Smith, an early investor in Jewel. Also with us, Sand Hill Strategies co-founder Stephanie Miller. Greg and Stephanie, thanks for joining us. Greg, obviously you're an investor in this and other companies. So what is your reaction? Are states, in your view, overreacting? Yeah, good, good morning, Brian. First off, I'd like to say that I actually hate smoking. I, I would love to see a day where cigarettes well, are wiped. vaping is smoking. Well, I, I, smoking combustible cigarettes. I'd love to see cigarettes wiped off the face of the earth. I think there's three very important issues facing public health and in the industry today, many of which are all being conflated, and they're important to break down and address. But I think we're also at risk of actually uh, knocking us back and reducing the incredible gains that we've made in reducing the smoking How rates so, to the though? lowest that we've ever seen. Yeah, but, but, but teen va vaping is smoking in a different form. You, yep. It's a nicotine transfer device, well, right? I, I think three issues are uh, certainly the youth issue. I think no kid should be permitted to have a nicotine access to nicotine, my kids included. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's several things we can do to address this right now. We can promulgate Tobacco 21. We can use technology to keep tobacco and nicotine products away from children. So I think those are very important things that can be done immediately to stop that issue. The second is certainly uh, with these illnesses that are being reported. Um, it, I think it's important to point out that we're not seeing any of these illnesses reported in any other countries, particularly mature vaping markets. If you look at the UK, where the government really pushes their smokers to, to embrace and adopt e-cigarettes, you're not seeing any illnesses. The illnesses here have really been tied to illicit black market cannabis pods. And I think that there's a certain amount of fear mongering going on, blaming the e-cigarette, the nicotine e-cigarette segment of the industry. Well, the, Stephanie, the way the governments have handled the story differently is very, is very apparent to Greg's point. Number one, in the UK, the sort of the government has basically said, hey, where a lot, of, a lot more people smoke on a percentage basis than here, they said, hey, use this as a way to quit smoking cigarettes. Here, Vaping has sort of become an, an entry-level smoking device because, you know, they have these flavors and things like that. How do you believe that the U.S. government, Congress, is going to ultimately react and, and adjust itself or outlaw these products? Yeah, this has obviously become an extremely emotional debate. I think the idea of kids using nicotine products is... is quite alarming and scary. And to your question earlier, I mean, I think that e-cigarettes should not really be viewed as smoking. Smoking really has to do more with the combustion, the lighting the thing on fire and inhaling it. And so with the U European, the, in the UK specifically, the government has said, when you're not combusting, we have plenty of evidence that shows that the exposure to carcinogens is far lower, so you should switch. If you're a current smoker and you want to quit, this could be a way that you quit. No, new people should use it. In the U.S., though, the flavors story, this current vaping epidemic, which is true, it's never been actually tied explicitly yeah. to e-cigarettes, it just is causing a huge amount of panic. And so I think Congress could end up banning these products. I think they could certainly ban flavors of these products, which is very interesting because menthol-flavored cigarettes are still on the market. Do you, Greg, agree with that, that that's ultimately what's going to happen, is that the flavored side is going to ultimately be banned and we're going to just kind of do it as more of a, a, hopefully, a smoking cessation device? Yeah, I think banning nicotine vapor is not the, not the right answer. I think that uh, Massachusetts and Walmart's decision, if Walmart really wanted to do something in the interest of public health, they would have maybe said they temporarily banned the sale or restricted the sale of e-cigarettes until they understand and have more clarity from the CDC. Actually, they should have pulled cigarettes from their uh, store shelves. We know that cigarettes kill approximately half a million Americans a year. Mm -hmm. So if they really wanted to be a good actor, pull cigarettes off the shelf. But banning vapor is not the right, uh, right decision. And in Massachusetts in particular... Need, why do we need it at all? Well, uh, unfortunately... Because I, I, I guess I'm, I'm old enough to... Yeah, I'll admit this. I, Stephanie, I don't know where you guys grew up. I went to high school in rural Virginia. Yep. I played baseball. And half your class probably smoked cigarettes. No, I would have cope, I would have, you know, sort of Kodiak. Yep. You know, I would dip like all the dipping. It was gross. You had the cup. I get it. It's, you know, whatever. But it was nicotine. Yeah. It was, and what's the difference? But that's probably still going to uh, cause five types of cancer. I think with vaping, we, we have enough data that we know that it's much, much less harmful for the user than smoking combustible cigarettes. So it, it, it's a much better outcome. In Massachusetts, by banning these products, you're going to push their citizens right into the black market, which is where we know these illnesses are coming well, or from. Or not in the market at all, though. Yeah, right? but I mean, if you have a nicotine addiction, you, you're going to need to get... Your, your nicotine. Fair, so, fair enough, but Stephanie, is it... we want to push it, people onto cigarettes again? Well, I, I don't know, Stephanie. Well, how do you, Congress is going to react one of two ways. They're going to look at it like Greg is suggesting, like, hey, get these things off, whatever, or they're going to look at it and say, how, whether it's dip in your lip 
<laughs> or, or an e-cigarette, you're still getting people hooked on nicotine before they, you know, before they're adults, effectively. Yeah, I mean, nicotine itself is very dangerous because it's addictive, but it's not in and of itself extremely dangerous. So the the thing that public health should be concerned with is the delivery of that nicotine. And what's really interesting is in the late 80s, there started to be research that I recently learned about that showed that exclusive use of dip, like you are talking about, Brian, is actually not particularly, like nearly as harmful. It's not good for you, but it's not nearly as harmful as dual use, as using dip in smoking. And that type of information would be really helpful for consumers to know. And so, like, again, going back to us versus the UK, the UK is trying to help educate people. Um, I think that the US Congress is, it's too emotional yep. and it's too scary to go out on a limb and try to call vaping products, which are not designated cessation products as such. Well, we can have this debate, but I also do wonder, Greg and Stephanie, if Congress might be a little busy with something else in the next oh, couple yeah. of days and weeks. I, just a wild <laughs> suspicion. Remember those candy cigarettes with like the, the, the sugar and you blow? Those are fabulous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're great. The anyway. boardwalks, the boardwalks of Delaware are still selling those. I know that one for a fact. Hey, really? <laughs> they're not a quarter anymore. There though. you go, Stephanie Miller, Greg. Good, listen, good discussion, hot topic. Thanks for coming in. We Thank really you. appreciate it. All right.